Are you looking to start off or possibly add some Ethereums to your collection? In this two-part series, this being part two, I will link part one at the very top there, I will go through most of my nearly 40 Ethereums that I have been growing in my collection for either a number of years or a number of months and tell you my opinions in terms of this or that, which one's better to go, and also give you a bit of a score in terms of how I have found growing these Anthuriums. So stick with me and let's dive into it. Hi, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today, as I mentioned, is going to be a continuation of that first video. And without kind of going into too, too much details, in the first video, I kind of went through some of my more commonly found Anthuriums. Now we're going to dive into a few more of the Anthuriums that are a bit more unique and maybe not everybody owns. And this might be one to kind of introduce you to some of these plants, but also for the people that have been here for a while to kind of give you a bit of an update on how they're doing. So without further ado, let's go to the first one. And I do have this one to show you up close. Oh, just, just stunning. This is my Anthurium erysimoides. And it ticks a lot of boxes. It's got multiple leaflets on each leaf. It's got that corrugation. It's a slightly velvety, rubbery, leathery feel. It's not velvety, but it's very, very unctuous, basically. But this plant has been an absolute joy to grow. It does grow tall, you can see there. This is one that potentially, had I have given it something to climb on, it would have been a lot happier. The other thing, and on the negative side of things, when it comes to mealy bugs, this is one that can be a bit of a mealy bag magnet, and I might be able to bring it in. Hopefully, you might be able to pick up there the mealy bug, I don't know if you will but nooks and crannies. Mealy bugs love a good nooks and crannies, basically. But this has been a joy, an absolute joy to grow. This is in my semi-hydro mix. I'm trying to look if there's any roots coming at the bottom. No, um, not my semi-hydro mix. Soil Ninja semi-hydro mix, but the one that I use from Soil Ninja, that's what I meant there. But um, yeah, this has been growing wonderfully. Winter and summer, stable, stable growth. This summer now, I'm starting to give it a bit more of a reservoir. I am looking at some of the roots and the roots are relatively fine. So I've given this a bit of a coarse mix, but to be fair, and some of the crisping that you can see there is that we had some unseasonably like warm days and it didn't have a reservoir at that point and it crisped up. But actually, I have to say, if you're looking for corrugated leaves, I know this isn't heart shaped, but this one for me, out of most of my corrugated plants, or even Anthurium specifically, is one that grows without too many problems. Would this have benefited from me giving it a moss pole? Probably. But again, I didn't know that this was a kind of one that would climb up quite so quickly. And I do encourage a lot of sellers now, if they're selling Anthuriums like this, where people might just assume that they're gonna be low-lying plants and maybe go up from a bit more of a crown at the bottom, if they are ones that climb up do let people know because I think they would like to know because they might start off really low and if you don't give it a moss pole very quickly, you will get a very, very leggy tall plant. I don't mind it, but mm. um, in terms of this or that for this one, any corrugated anthurium, this or that, this basically, super, super easy. Again, my experiences with my corrugated anthuriums. And in terms of a score out of 10 for this, 10 being the best, zero being the worst, I'd give this a solid eight or a nine. This is, this is a plant that has brought me no end of joy. You can see the new leaf that is coming in there. Oh. And they do have almost like a ready tinge to the petioles and the ribs underneath the leaves. You can kind of see the ribs underneath the leaves. Oh, just beautiful. Not a particularly fussy anthurium. Definitely one that if you're wanting to go into one of the, some of the lesser known anthuriums, but are a bit unsure which ones might be tricky. This one, at least in my experience, hasn't been. Now moving on to a slightly more colorful anthurium. I'm trying to see if there's any pests on this. There isn't currently, and that should give you an indication basically. What is this? 
Is it fluff or is it pests? Fluff, that's fine. I can deal with fluff, I think. Yes, fluff, fine. So this is, oh, and I'm trying to remember the hybrid now. This is, what am I blocking? This is the Anthurium Zara X Michelle, basically. And this is one of Doc Block's hybrids. I got one recently, and I'll kind of link the video when I first unboxed it. It was quite small. It's been growing steadily, basically. I've not had it for many, many months just yet, basically. That's the most recent leaf. And you might be able to, I don't think these things ever really carry over too, too well in videos. Even when I was looking at this on videos, I'm just like, oh, you're talking about it, a kind of purpley red, and people were just like, yes, of course it is. And I'm just like, is it though? I can't really see it. But very leathery leaves. It has got red kind of nerves at the back of the leaves. And when this comes in, this is probably closer to the color that it is before it starts fading down. But you can see this has had pest, basically. It's more, it comes in kind of like a, a purpley red color. It's beautiful when it's come in. It has been growing steadily um, for me, and I'm trying to think now in terms of semi-hydro, it's doing really, really well. It hasn't had too much of an issue, but you can see this one's more of a squat one. And I should probably give it a bit more support around the, the base, but it's getting enough at the moment that it should be okay. With this, this isn't a particularly cheap plant because it is a hybrid from Doc Block. If you don't know who Doc Block is, go and do a quick Google search. You will see wonderful things there in hybrids. Um, but it is one that I have enjoyed growing. It's been really, really fun. But I will say that any pest going for this one, meaty bugs, thrips, spider mites, everything will go to this plant. It is very, very attractive to them. So I'm constantly battling it and it is very, very fragile in its kind of early leaf stage. So there is that to remember. I don't think there is much of a comparison this or that for this one because it's such a specific hybrid. I don't have any other hybrid that's similar in terms of coloration. So I wouldn't feel comfortable giving you a this or that for this one. But I will give this a score and say for this, a seven or an eight, it would probably be a tiny bit higher if it wasn't expensive and not to take away I do think that this is worth the money that they're asking for it because it's so unique but I do also understand that this is not going to be in everybody's kind of financial bracket really so I do get it but beautiful beautiful plants and the people that grow this that I got it from in the UK the botany bros cannot recommend them enough at all basically they grow beautiful plants and the specimens come through great just my experiences with this have been a bit more challenging. Hopefully, if any of you have got this plant and if you've had different experiences, let us all know. But nonetheless, a very, very cool plant, right? And this is the re-emergence of the Metallicum. And you can see the Metallicum there, the Anthurium Metallicum. I mentioned it in the first video when I was comparing this to a hybrid that I, what I think is now a hybrid in relation to the true form, which is the Anthurium Metallicum that I've got in front of me now. And I know that I do not have the Metallicum, even though that's what I was sold it as. This is a truly spectacular plant. Unlike a lot of my other Anthuriums that might be pest magnets, this one so far, touch wood, has been fine in terms of pests. It doesn't seem to be getting too, too many issues. It is growing in a semi-hydro. It is growing a spectacularly well. Do I need to give it a bigger pot at some point soon? Probably. But what more can I say about this in terms of this or that? So this or my hybrid, and I know you don't know what hybrid it is, this every time, but this versus, because it still has kind of velvety type leaves and they are kind of stripy leaves. This is actually very similar to the Waterburyanum, basically. I think it's a Waterburyanum, yeah. And even potentially, some might say, to the Queen Anthurium. Between this and the Queen Anthurium, this, between this and the Waterburyanum, either, to be fair. And so far, it's been growing quite well. I don't think I've even had this for a year. So it's doing well. And yeah, if I was to give this a bit of a score, I would rank this as a nine to be fair. It's been very, very cool. To the person that I traded and I got this plant from, thank you. Truly, you do not know how much good you have done, basically. 
Um, very, very cool plant. Um, some of the white that you're seeing on here is more kind of mineral deposits rather than anything else. No pest whatsoever on this one. Right, and moving on to the plant that I, on my first video that I was talking about, the Anthurium bellatus, that this is very, very similar. So this is, ooh, give me a sec. Handy dandy phone so I can see what it is. This is what you usually don't see and it's behind the scenes, but I'm just like, you know what, Let, let's go for it today, basically. It is, bear with, holder, holder. Bear with cooler, that's the word. This is the Anthurium balawanum. Balawanum. Do, 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 do. Sounds like a song and sounds like a bit of a dancey dance. Um, but yeah, this is one that can get absolutely stonking huge. I think I've shared images of how big this plant can get. Do a quick Google and you can see how big this is. Very similar shape, very thin leaves again, however, these ones, this specific plant of mine at least, has never, ooh, when I say this, as I just found a mealybug, um, has never really suffered from mealybugs, basically. And I need to get better, I know it, with my anthuriums to take off some of these caterpillars because they all start off in there. And then before you know it, you've got an infestation and you can't handle it. But so far, so good with this one. And it's been a joy to grow. It has only just recently been up potted to a new pot because it was having to get watered every three days. And I think it's already quite dry. So we shall see how it goes. But the Anthurium balanoanum, 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 uh, versus the Bellatus Anthurium balanoanum. 100% slightly different shape. Although the balanoanum and the Bellatus, they've all got a similar shape to the Anthurium argyrostachium, which is coming up soon. Um, this one, I think, takes the cake from all of them. Consistent grower, grows happily. Again, had I have known that it needed to climb, I probably would have given it a bit more of a support earlier on, rather than just the janky support stick. But, and I should have guessed with this one because this gets huge leaves, basically. Um, really glad I've got it in my collection and in terms of a score out of 10, a nine, a solid nine, possibly even a 10. This, this is one that I've really engroy, engroyed, engroyed for the people that have been for the previous videos, engroyed, enjoyed <laughs> growing. Um, this is, yeah, it's been really good. The, the leaves are really, really thin, but it seems to be handling everything quite well. I would almost hazard a guess that this might be one that would do well in household conditions. I'm kind of feeling the leaves. They're a bit more on the leathery, almost rubbery side of things rather than um, that kind of velvety feel leaves. So if that is your jam, may I suggest the Balawanum. Right, next one up, and I will bring it up so you might be able to see it. So, Loads of loads of leaves on this and I actually had a very similar conversation. There is a new leaf coming in there and obviously this has been watered recently so it's going to drip everywhere. You can see some of the older leaves. There is also, I just noticed, two inflorescences on this. One goes, two goes. And there are good reasons for that, basically. Um, right, let me give you a bit more indication. Let me give you the name of this plant first because again, why am I blocking? And a uh, spoiler, this is not gonna be one that's gonna get a great score. And this is probably why I don't remember the name of it as well. So, doo -doo -doo. so yes. So this is the Anthurium Eminence. And uh, I have thoughts on this plant. I have a lot of thoughts on this plant. And I will put it here so you can kind of see the leaves. Yes, so firstly, I would have loved to have known that this was a climber. There is a secondary little plant down at the bottom, but as I said with the spoiler earlier on, I wouldn't give this a great score. This was up in conversation recently with one of you lovely people actually, because they were, they were saying, look, I'm thinking about buying it. What have your experiences been with the eminence? And I said, look, I did the video when I first got this from Equigenera, I got it with the Clavigerum, which is coming up. And again, this or that, 100% hands down, not this, the Clavigerum, 
because it was meant to get loads of little leaves. It, it, it struggles, it goes back. We've got more leaves coming in. It's not giving me what it promised to give me. It is exceptionally fussy with its water, or at least I have found. So this is one of those frustrating plants that it is in semi-hydro. And there's a lot of times where it's just like, I don't want a reservoir. If I have a reservoir, I will rot off half of my leaves and I've grown and lost so many leaves on this plant. It is ridiculous, basically. Um, and then the summer comes around, it's just like, I desperately need a water reservoir because otherwise I am gonna drop all of my leaves. And then you give it a water reservoir and it's just like, I hate my life. I don't want a water reservoir now. And it's just a bit like, Zen moment. I am still growing it. I am still trying to grow it just at this point out of spite. But yeah, score wise, two. Two, I would probably go down to one with this one, but two. Just no. And before anybody asks, this video, most of my videos, even if I give plants a low score, it does not mean I am willing to part with them just yet. If I am, I will let you know in videos. I do appreciate that a lot of people are just like, you didn't like it. I'll take it off your hands. I'm just like, that's fine. But let me come to that decision first, please. <laughs> okay, and let's see how long this lasts because my camera just decided to switch off because it does this wonderful thing when it overheats. And I'm just like, it's not even that warm. How warm is it? Okay, it's a bit warm. It's about 31 degrees, but like, it means this, this, this person here is going to have to film at the bum crack of dawn in order for the camera not to die. So the next few filming sessions, or most of the summer, might be at 6am. <laughs> Joys for me. Keep in mind, it is only half nine in the morning at the moment, so <laughs> we shall see. At the moment, I have tried to fix the issue by, and I'm still getting a warning, I'm looking at the camera, I've got a fan blowing on the camera. Hopefully that won't mess with the audio, but let's continue, shall we? Right, another one that's a bit of an interesting one, and I'll bring it in and I need to hold it over the water reservoir because again, I have watered the Anthurium Pinklii. Pinklii, Pinklii, I think, yes. And it is still very bushy. It is still doing quite well. Oh, there's an inflorescence. It's about to get snapped off. Uh, beautifully done. Everybody's just like, no, try to pollinate. I'm still trying to decide what I'm gonna pollinate, so give me, give me a chance. I'm trying to see if there's any pests on this. Mm, is there? Possibly. But this one's an interesting one. So very Tesla-y, planty, so versus the, so this or that, I bet it's not gonna be an anthurium this time around, the Tesla philodendron, I would actually go with this. The pink eye is very, very interesting. It's, it was meant to have more of a cup shape when I first got it, but it's never been able to do that in my care. It just does more of a T-shaped. Um, it grows like mad. This is one again, like the one I was just talking about before, the eminence, it's just like, I want a water reservoir. No, I don't want a water reservoir. Yes, I do, but no, I don't. But generally this one's better. This one's got thicker leaves. This one's had consistent growth, even with all the knockbacks. There've been a couple of situations with mealybugs, but nothing too huge. And this one is pupping like mad. So this one for me, I would say is a goer basically. In terms of a score, hmm, this would be a seven, seven, solid seven basically. So the next one, I've had to kind of move you around so you can might be able to see one of the newest leaves are here. And this is my Anthurium Esmeraldense next to the Philodendron Esmeraldense. And some of you who've seen previous videos that I've done on this plant might know where this is going. So interestingly, the this or that between the Anthurium Esmeraldense and the Philodendron Esmeraldense I would say go for the philodendron as meraldens. It's a bit easier because it's still a philodendron, but the anthurium as meraldens has been almost as easy. Interestingly, actually, the combination or the kind of comparison that I can do would probably be the anthurium as meraldens versus the anthurium, not archaeostachium. Oh, what's it called? Names, names, too many botanical names. 
the Anthurium Recavum. And I would say go for the Recavum. Because the Recavum, very, very similar to this, but the Recavum is much more interesting when it comes to the emerging leaves. The person who also told me about the kind of chocolatey color of the emerging leaves did kind of reach out. Hi. Uh, thanks again for that. Um, and they mentioned as well that inflorescence is quite pretty. So watch out for that if you do get the Recavum. Because I remember when I did the unboxing, some people saw the Recavum and just went, eh, it's okay, it's fine, but it doesn't set my world on fire. Very similar to the Anthurium Esmeraldense, but that one I think is slightly more interesting. And in terms of ease of growth, this one has been super easy to grow, like nothing you would ever believe before. And it's been consistently growing for me without any problem. So score wise, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, easy, easy 10 out of 10. Now I'll do another one that I will hopefully bring a picture or a video here, and that would be my Ethereum Pedatum. And the Pedatum, I've done a review, so we'll link that at the top as well. Absolutely stunning. So glad that I messed up when I thought I was buying the Pedatum Radiatum and I bought the Pedatum. Super, super, super happy that I got that plant. In terms of that versus a potato radiatum, I don't know because I've never had the potato radiatum, but I know some people that have grown it have said it's not the easiest plant to grow. So I'd say between this or that, the podatum might be a better one to go for. And in terms of score, hmm, a solid nine, a solid nine. Really, really easy nine, that one. Shall we have another look at a rubbishy one? Basically, again, I'm, I'm giving you the spoilers here, but... Um, this one is the Lutheri, the Anthurium Lutheri. So <laughs> that's the growing bit there. It's dropped off its leaves. It does have multiple growth points, so that it does go, go for it. This is one that's meant to be um, kind of a strappy leaf Anthurium. And it does grow, it grows in a really odd way. So every node might activate and it will do that regardless of everything else as well. Has it got some mealy bugs? Of course it does because it's summer and everything is thriving including the bugs at this point. But um, yes, this one, <laughs> if it's kind of this versus any other kind of pendant type anthurium which has got those strappy leaves, anything else but this in my opinion. Because again, and this is something that I would have liked to have known, this isn't a true pendant anthurium. It doesn't do the whole kind of like trailing down thing. This goes up and gets really kind of thin strappy leaves. So yeah, any other pendant anthurium for me or any other strappy leaf anthurium for me, I don't know with this one in terms of its roots. Sometimes it's happy, sometimes it's not. The smallest amount of damage on the leaf will turn it into rubbish. It does have nice ruffles, I will give it that. But score for this, a two or a one. A two or a one. And I will show you the other one that I got at the same time, which does have a better score. I almost didn't bring this up to show you, but I'm going a bit fast with these ones because I'm very aware that my phone might decide to die on me at any given time. I'm also still getting the hot, <laughs> still getting the hot weather warning. <laughs> I know, I'm sweltering. Um, Anthurium Frederikstalii, for the people that haven't seen this for a while. Ooh, and there's an inflorescence that I missed, but it did not skip a beat. This has grown consistently. There is a new leaf coming in there. This has grown consistently for me over the winter as well as the summer. It is now definitely kicking into gear. This is a plant that 100% is a pendant Anthurium. And it's doing really, really well. So this one versus the other one that I was just looking at, this one. This one. The leaves are quite thin. I don't know if they get as big as the Vitara folium that's behind me here. Um, as wide, I mean. But I, this has been a joy to grow. So if you find the Frederick Stylii, I would say go for it. It's got decent sized roots as well. Yeah, it's got decent sized roots and I can see them through here. They are thriving in my kind of Soul Ninja semi hydro mix. Yeah, there's not much more I can say about this score. Nine, nine, solid nine. Really, really cool. I'll show you one more pendant and then we'll move on to other types of anthuriums. So this is another, I had to look up the name there. <laughs> this is another pendant leaf anthurium and I got it last year at an event that I was doing a talk at basically and this is called the anthurium pendants. 
I mean, the roots are good. You can kind of see it there. And I don't know if it's one that takes a while to get established. It has not done very much for me in nearly a year. It's, it's not done bad. It's not struggled in any way or form but it also hasn't done very much for me. So I don't know if it doesn't like the substrate, if it doesn't like my conditions. It's an okay plant. There's, a, there's an interesting story, Claire from the Jungle Haven, if you see this. Hi, this is the plant we were talking about, remember? Um, I'm still enjoying growing it to be fair, but this or that between this and the Frederick Stalii, go for the Frederick Stalii. For this, in terms of the score, I would give this a very, uh, for now, uh, kind of five or six, basically. It's okay. Um, it does okay. Would the leaves get much larger? I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. And that's actually the leaf that's twisted. That leaf is meant to be that way. But it's okay. It's an okay pendant, basically. All right, coming in strong with more plants. And this one was a struggle bus from an old unboxing video. This is the Anthurium cupuli spathum. So it has finally bounced back. There are still the two growth points. It is doing much better. This is one that's also got the chance of getting absolutely ginormous leaves. I saw this on the Equigenera Instagram and they were showing a mother plant. And Wow, the size of the leaves was huge and nobody was talking about it at that point. I think more people are aware of it now. This I think I got as a seedling. It hasn't sized up massively, but it is happy and it's growing. Um, between this one and the Belaoanum, I'd still say the Belaoanum, that one seems to be sizing up nicely, but this one is staying more compact. I had to look at it there. That one has got more of a climbing kind of habit to it. Um, and in terms of a score, is that a new inflorescence? Everything has an inflorescence, which is good. It means some of them are happy and it's summer and obviously they want to like, oh, it's almost summer there. They want to like bloom, I get it. But no, not in my house. I want leaves. I don't not need ratty little inflorescences. It's fine. I'm not doing any kind of pollinating right now. I might do it further down in the season, but I want, it, I want them all to get some leaves, especially the ones that have been struggling like this one. But leathery leaves, Score for this one, a six or a seven for now. If this gets huge the way that it does, it will definitely get a den. But for now, it's, it's okay, it's okay. And it's got like kind of like arrow shaped leaves, very similar to another, ah, so very similar to the philodendron, ooh, penatilobum, I think, affinity that I've got. Very similar, but kind of different at the same time. But yes, the Anthurium cupulispathum. We're coming to the end, I promise, but there's still a few to go, so let's go through them. So the recently repotted Anthurium Microspadix. So with this one, it's interesting because you can see it's not living its best life. It's got two stems in there. I think it was unhappy in the kind of semi-hydro mix for a good few years now. It kept ripping. It will get every bug under the sun. This is one that Jacob, who owns and runs um, Grow Tropicals, had recommended to me at their event. Am I unhappy that I got this? No, I'm also trying to squish bugs. Give me a sec. I'm not unhappy that I got this. I think this is a very cool plant. It is an interesting one that if you ever do get it that you might want to leave the inflorescence on for the first time around. So it's, it's a little, little tiny inflorescence. That's why it's called the Microspadix, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Microspadix, yeah. This, to give you some context, was 65 pounds. It hasn't grown much more in the last two years than it did before, but purely because it struggled. Every bug under the sun score, if I'm being truthful, a four or a three. If it starts doing better now in soil, then I would probably give it a better score. But for now, yeah, it's, 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 it's a bit underwhelming. Also, just to quantify before anybody goes for poor Jacob, Jacob did exactly what I needed him to do. I told him, look, I need something really weird and kooky that not a lot of people have heard of. And he just like, this is a really cool one. You might want to try it out. That's all he said. I'm still glad I got it, basically. All right, there's a couple of extra anthuriums that I have done in, um, my recent plant hole. I haven't had them for that long, but uh, let's just quickly go through them and then I'll wrap up the video just because the, the phone, the phone, the camera is about to die hard on me basically because the heat is just too much. So 
The flavel in the atom is doing well. It's throwing a bit of a hissy fit. I've lost a couple of the lowest leaves, but I finally took it out of its damp sphagnum moss and moved it into an anthurium soil mix. So it's gonna take a moment to adjust, and I think that's what's happening. It's just yellowing off some of the lowest leaves. I can still see the roots, and they are super, super happy. So I am good with that. So that one is a really good one. I don't know if there's any kind of comparison to that one, because it's got those kind of arrow-shaped leaves. But in terms of a score so far, it's a hard nine for me. I really like it, really, really like it. But yeah, so that one's a good one if you can kind of capture it. And it, st it stays relatively compact. It's not one that needs kind of moss poles and stuff to grow. And then moving on to the Anthurium Recovum. Mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier on, this or that in terms of that or the Anthurium Esmeraldense, this, so much cooler. I, annoyingly, I've only had one leaf emerge and I don't think I've taken a picture. If I have, I will add it here. Um, but very cool. It comes at dark, almost chocolatey brown kind of color. It's very unctuous. Super easy so far to grow as well. So overall for that one, and again, I'm going through these a bit quicker because I haven't owned them for that long. Overall for that one, I would give it a seven, eight, or a nine. Like it's somewhere there basically. It's really, really cool. Now the Argyrostachium. <laughs> it was getting a leaf. I kind of gave it some damn sphagnum moss, but it is looking like the most pathetic thing in the world now. So that one is getting a low score. That one, I'm not even comparing it to anything. That one might have just been mine. That's going to get a one from me, really, at this point. So it is what it is. And a couple more, I think. Yes. Uh, I'm not going to touch on the Luxurians because my one kind of rotted down to almost nothing. But the Luxurians versus... A Luxurians hybrid, I would go with a hybrid every time. Just make sure that you know what it's hybridized with. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is uh, Magnificum and Luxurians, rather than the, I mentioned this in my previous video, the Regal ever, and the um, Luxurians together, because the Regal is a bit fussy. The Luxurians can be a bit fussy as well. So go for something that's been hybridized with the Luxurians that's easy. That's all I would say. Luxurians, for me, if you've got it growing and it's growing well, it will get a nine. It's a very interesting, very hard anthurium. But a lot of people, including myself, even the people that did well, including myself, that then end up getting it to struggle and go down to nothing again for that. It's either a nine or a two. So <laughs> Clear as mud? And I'm convinced that I want to go through all of them. So let me do another couple, basically. Anthurium water burianum. Velvety type leaves. This is the one that's always hybridized with the Queen Anthurium, the Anthurium Warroquanum. Between this and the Anthurium Warroquanum, and I will be very blunt with this, and I always kind of saw people comparing the two. I'm just like, this is nowhere near as interesting as the Queen Anthurium. However, much faster than the Queen Anthurium. It's already giving me its first new leaf, and it seems a lot hardier. So this over the Queen Anthurium, believe it or not. Not for looks. For looks, Go with the Queen Anthurium because you can't beat that. But for ease of care, go with the Anthurium Waterburianum if you can get it. And score-wise, I would give this a solid seven. So the next one on the list, I will put a picture here because it is zero chance that I'm going to be able to take it out and show you because of the way that it's kind of grown. But it is a corrugated type Anthurium. And I've got the blunt label out of the blunt. So Anthurium Rogulosum Luruqui. Um, I will put it up the top as well. And it's an interesting one. So again, if we're going for corrugated looks, the ones that I've got, I would go for the Erisimoides over this one. This one has got more of that heart-shaped leaf. It hasn't been as difficult as I thought it was going to be to grow. The one that's grown rubbish is the Agurostachium, but the roots on that were shocking. Uh, this one does seem to have thicker roots, which does quite well. It is one that grows better in the winter. I think it's from a higher elevation, so it needs those cooler temperatures. So it popped out a really, really decent sized leaf as the, we were coming into spring, but I don't think it's going to do very much now in the summer. It is growing in semi-hydro. Score for that one, even after everything I've just said, it's a good eight, actually. It's a very pretty plant, but I would still choose the Erisimoides over that any day of the week. And you knew this wasn't going to be an Anthurium video of mine if I didn't bring out the QTQNC. <laughs> I'm still impressed that I've kept this alive. <laughs> Is it thriving? Mm, 
debatable. Is it alive? Yes. <laughs> so this is the one that was also mentioned in Enid's book. You can see that leaf kind of reverted back to a slightly more juvenile form. It is meant to have that kind of chicken foot. Now that I've also got the chickens, this is kind of important to me. Uh, quite why, I don't know. Um, this isn't really comparable to anything else, but this one definitely does need a support structure to grow up, and I have given it it, and it seems to be doing a lot better. You might be able to see if some of the leaves will move out the way. Possibly, I don't know if you can see it right there. There's a new growth point um, that's coming in. This one I thought would do better in the winter, but actually it doesn't seem to be skipping too much of a beat. This is one that needs constant moisture around it. This needs humidity. This is not for the beginners. For that reason alone, in terms of ease, I will give it a very low score of one to two. In terms of kooky beauty, and just for the chicken foot of it all, I would give this a nine. I do, I have really enjoyed growing this. I'm trying not to get attached to it because I know that it could potentially die on me in a split second. But I've really enjoyed, grow, enjoyed growing this. I didn't say engroid. Enjoyed growing this. Um, so yeah, that was, that's my opinion on this one. Right, last two, and they are both in the shelf, so I will give you pictures and videos of them both. So let's start off with the first one, the Clavigerum versus the Eminence. Clavigerum, hands down. It doesn't get too many more leaves. It's meant to get a lot more, so I would say hedge your bets with that one. It's also one that ideally, if I would have known, it would have given it a moss pole. It does seem to want to grow quite tall. The leaves aren't getting that kind of undulation that you might get when you see mature pictures of this. I'm also not getting too many new leaflets. However, super easy to care for, never had any pest problems, grows consistently, blooms consistently, set it and forget it type of anthurium. For that reason alone, I will give this an eight or a nine. So Clavigerum, really, really good. Is it the most interesting plant? That would probably get maybe a three or a four. It's not the most interesting plant. It would be if it got those undulations and more leaves because they start looking a bit more oak-like, but yeah. And the last one I wanted to touch, and I'm really thinking that I've maybe not missed any at the moment. I think we may have covered all of them. I'm probably gonna kick myself and realize that I've missed one or two somewhere, but apologies if I have. The Anthurium Arrow. Very, very cool. Very similar. I left that and the Clavigerum together because they've grown together. They have both had water reservoirs even in the winter. They're above radiators. So even though it's humid in here, the environment around them is probably relatively dry. They have not skipped a beat. And the fact that I cannot get them out of my plant shelf now because they're so intertwined and so huge within it should tell you something considering that I've only owned both of those plants about a year now. So the Anthurium Arrow, amazing. It's got that cup shaped. If you're going for the cuppy shape thing and you're looking at the pinkly eye, that one probably hasn't done that for me too, too much. Oh no, and there is another one here. <laughs> too many anthuriums. Um, but that arrow plant, really, really good. A solid eight or a nine again. Really, really good. Talking about the ones that I forgot, there's two more, I swear, these videos. This is why I did two parts for these videos. They're both going to be really, really long. Um, this is the Anthurium. Oh, what's, which one's this one? Because I've only just added it to the collection. The Lancia. Look at that leaf. This is the newest leaf, and it's grown in my care, and it's doing some of the cuppiness. This is more interesting than the Arrow because it's got a slight kind of crocodile skin texture to it. Uh, so far, it's been really, really easy. Would I say between this and the arrow? I don't know. On looks alone, I would go with this because it's more interesting than the arrow. In terms of speed, the arrow still beats this hands down. So make up your mind that way. It's, is it fair for me to give these things a score at the moment? I don't know because I've not owned them for too long. But if I had to, if you put a gun to my head and I had to give this a score, this is a seven currently. And one more, one more. I can't move it out. It's too much of a hassle to move it out. It's already got too, too big. But the Anthurium Offalterianum, I think it is. And this is the one I think was named after Enid from Grow, um, from NSE Tropicals. Not Grow Tropicals, Grow Tropicals. is Jacob, Enid from NSE Tropicals. Stunning. And I know so many people were underwhelmed with this plant and I get it. It's probably not the most interesting thing. It's got slight ruffling and it's got the slightly long leaves. And hopefully I've got images here that you can see. But damn, I have never, 
ever seen an Anthurium in my entire collection that grows as fast and as consistently as the Ophelterianum. That might just be mine and it might be my experience. If you've got this plant, I know not many people do, do let us know down below, but wow, just absolutely insane. And I know we're coming into the growing season, but I don't know if there's anything to compare it to. It's kind of leave, leaves wise, it's something between the Bellano Anum, it's something between the Vici, it's something kind of close to the Esmeral Dense, the Recarvum ish. It's giving those types of vibes, but it's also got the long, long kind of leaves. It's, it's difficult to compare it with, it's its own thing, so there isn't really a this or that there. However, Currently, and I have not grown it for too long, but as it's going at the moment, hard nine or a 10 for this one. Hard, 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 hard. If it keeps going like this. This is gonna be one of my favorite anthuriums, hands down in terms of ease. Is it the most interesting to look at? Not necessarily, but wow, if you want one that will grow like mad, at least based on my limited experience that I've had with it so far, that insane. I'm pointing because it's down there basically, but yes. I will wrap up the video here before my phone dies and I'm really hoping that this footage isn't all destroyed from heat or whatever basically and I have to refilm this I might cry in my desk whilst I'm editing going <laughs> no um, but yes hopefully you've all enjoyed let me know your score your thoughts on some of these plants down below apologies that you've not had my usual two videos for a while now but life got in the way, business, birthdays, talking at Malvern, bank holidays, all of these things uh, just means that it's really difficult for me to edit, not necessarily film, but edit two videos in one week. So apologies for that, hopefully, and I'm hoping, 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 we're going back to the two videos a week schedule as of this week, basically. But yes, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.